What does the future hold for the country's aging power stations? Well, it seems government has a plan. They will be replaced with renewable energy resources as part of the country's just energy transition plan. It's envisaged that um, that move will use renewables and batteries while creating new opportunities for affected workers and communities. But will this return the megawatts lost from the traditional power stations? Samson Mapoli joins us now as a director of the Center for Renewable Energy at Stellenbosch University. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time uh, this morning. A very good morning to you. Prof, you know, a lot of times when it comes to this coal debate as well as the energy debate in this country, I think many South Africans have felt time and time again that different excuses and different reasonings are met and are used time and time again to be able to justify why is it that we currently do not have consistent power supply. Now this one and being able to let go, for example, Komati power station, uh, you know, these old, uh, these aging uh, uh, coal power stations for renewables. What's your take on it? Is government heading in the right direction? Uh, good morning to you and the viewers. Yes, um, government is heading towards the right direction. Um, so if you look at the history of the problem that we're facing now, um, you will see that um, the, the problem has been the lack of, of proper planning and the, the bad implementation of the plans. That's basically what, what brought us here today. So renewable energy is going to happen. Um, whether government uh, participates in it or not, it will happen on its own. So government is being proactive, in my view, in planning this just energy transition to ensure that we don't lose a lot of jobs. We, we rather create more jobs in the, in the areas where the, the, coal, the old coal power stations uh, existed. So for instance, if you look at Komati, Komati is going to be used as an example for the just energy transition from which government can and, and ESCOM can then learn lessons and, and then implement better just energy transition models in other power stations. I've visited the power station myself. Mm. Um, they want to do 600 megawatts uh, hour of battery storage, 70 megawatt wind farm, uh, mini grid uh, manufacturing they are already manufacturing the mini grids uh, as we speak i've been to the to the manufacturing facilities uh, they are busy with the uh, aquaponic systems and synchronous condensers and they want to do 150 megawatt solar farm we have proposed additional interventions in the form of gravity storage facilities uh, hydrogen production for picking power uh, concentrated solar power, for instance, to produce, to continue producing steam for one of the generators, as well as gas turbines. So if you look at all these, um, the power station itself will continue to operate and okay. it will continue to produce uh, uh, some megawatts. And you've asked the question, will we produce the same megawatts that uh, the, the power station has been producing? And the answer is no. The, 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 the reason behind that is the particular power station is not required to produce the, the, the particular megawatts. Uh, we have the energy plan, which is the integrated resource plan that assists us in terms of bringing in new generation capacity. So some of the capacity that we lose in some of these power stations will have to come in through the, the, the public procurement program, which is the REAP program that is done through the Department of Energy and, and, and ESCOM. This move to renewable energy, especially when it comes to the aging coal uh, power stations, could it prove to be a more expensive exercise as opposed to if we were to get our ducks in a row and not be corrupt and actually refurbish and repurpose these power stations as they were and actually get the base load done? I mean, which one is more expensive? Is it the renewable energy route or would it be the coal supply route? So, so the, 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 age, the aging power stations, to, to, to basically uh, revive them, it's going to cost us a lot more than, than building renewed renewable energy power plants. So if you look at the costs uh, associated with all these projects, Medu the, 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 the um, Komati uh, project is going to be a little bit expensive um, because we, we government itself is, is supposed to invest some money there uh, in, in partnership with um, uh, the international committee. We'll get some loans to, to do some of the work that we need to do there. We'll get, and, but those loans will, be, uh, will have low interest rates. And then we will then get some grants to do some work there at, uh, at Komati. But going forward, we could then uh, outsource that 
uh, all that to, to independent power producers, uh, especially the, 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 the megawatts part. And that will then mean that we only pay per kilowatt hour that we, pro that, that, that we, we, we pull from these power stations as opposed to uh, bearing the burden of the huge capital investment. And in the long run, we're expecting that renewable energy projects will be much less expensive than coal uh, uh, power stations. And that's already happening. If you if you look at what happened at Dupi and Kusile, for instance, and you compare that to the to the levelized cost of generation for, for new generation capacity from renewable energy, it's not even comparable. We understand that there there were other issues of corruption and, and, and maladministration and other issues that yeah. the current uh, 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 management is dealing with. But going forward, we expect that renewable energy will be much cheaper than um, uh, uh, trying to revive the old coal power stations. You know, Prof, I've got uh, two questions for you. The first one is we keep speaking here about the loans and the grants that we're going to be obtaining for the purpose of being able to utilize this as a project uh, for renewable energies and, and, and the like. I, I always wonder, every time we go and we get a loan, there's interest. Though it may be low interest, but somebody has to pay back that loan. In this case, how do we pay back those loans? Because it's not just one loan that we're speaking about here. If anything, that uh, COP27 is going to go by with the different kind of grants and commitments that we've received from, you know, the, the West, so as it were, uh, there is a, a certain concern, especially around who's going to pay for these loans and how are they going to pay for the loans? Already South Africa is, is in the trillions when it comes to the amount of money that we have to pay for just the loans, right? So in this case, is there a plan to, play, to pay back the loans and how? So, so what is happening now with the current loans? Um, government is taking over ESCOM's uh, debt, um, part or part of the debt thereof, uh, so that ESCOM can be able to to make profit and be able to service some of their 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 their, their power stations. So, so some of that money can then be used to pay back some of the of the loans. What is happening at the moment? The the, the big ESCOM debt. Uh, it has got very high interest rates because it was not associated with any uh, um, uh, renewable energy. Mm. So what is happening now is that we're getting partly loans that are that are that have got very low interest rates mm. uh, that will be easy to service, um, uh, which which is called green finance, um, and and that loan those loans can be easily be paid back. Uh, from the the, 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 the various uh, activities or from the money that will that will flow or the revenue that will flow from the various activities that will be um, implemented there will be grants and um, I, I understand from the government point of view even the president mentioned that this they are negotiating that uh, the, we, we get a lot more loan more 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 more, more uh, 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 grants than loans mm. uh, and that is basically because the, the the west or the european countries and the americans um have got an obligation to assist the african continent in terms of uh, uh, its its drive for renewable energy because they have been co polluting themselves for quite a long time so so under that obligation they need mm. to give us grants as opposed to loans so going forward yeah. i don't see us taking a lot of loans i see us taking a lot of grants and maybe prof we can use this also as an educational moment here, we keep speaking about how the West is financing for the purpose of giving us loans and grants so that they can help us within our energy transition. But we do know that countries, even people, don't do something for nothing. At this moment in time, we're facing a situation where, for example, China still utilizes coal. The very same West that we're speaking about, they are needing our coal. Are we not then exporting our coal to the very same countries that are paying us to move to renewable energy? I, I, we're just struggling here with the, with the notion that so we're being given money to move to renewable energy, but the very same countries that are giving us money to move towards a renewable energy or just transition are the very same countries that are requiring coal. So the coal that could be used to capacitate our base load, uh, to capacitate you know, our needs as a country, why are we giving it away instead of utilizing it here in order to increase the capacity at ESCOM? Let's put the, uh, the corruption aside for a second here, which, which is very right. 
drive. But while we're using that coal to capacitate our base load, to, let show, to make sure that even those uh, um, uh, power stations which need coal, we are able to then uplift them and maintain them appropriately, instead of us being able to give away our coal to the very same countries that are paying us for our coal and giving us money to move to a different energy supply. I'm struggling with that. Okay, yes, and many people struggle with that, and I'm happy that you brought up this question. Um, so what has been happening is that the, the, some of these countries, or most of these countries that you've mentioned, have been using coal for quite a long time, even mm -hmm. before the climate debates. Um, and they have been importing some of the coal from us, uh, from Africa, because they don't have as much or as vast the resource as we have ourselves. So when the climate debates started, um, the, the, there was an agreement that there should be transition. On, on their side, they must transition from coal to gas and, and then to renewables. Um, and and, and, and on, the, on our side, we should then um, uh, build, have our new build as renewable energy. That is where the assistance came in. Remember, at some point, we had something that was called carbon credits because we, we're dealing with a global problem and not, and not a local kind of a problem. So what happened was with the carbon credits, those countries were, were required to, to, to support renewable energy projects in, the, in, in Africa and elsewhere um, in, in of, so that they can offset their own carbon, carbon footprint. But that did not work to a greater extent because they, they, they were still uh, emitting uh, uh, quite a lot. So what happens now is that they now have an obligation to assist us um, who, are, who, who are developing countries mm. in, in, in our new build uh, a, a capacity to ensure that we don't add onto the, 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 the space, the, 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 the CO2 and all that that, could, that pollutes to in the environment while they are transitioning themselves from uh, the, the, the fossil fuels to renewables uh, through the gas. What is happening at the moment is the fact that the war in Ukraine just disrupted that whole transition because uh, the, the, most of the European countries no longer have access to that gas that was part of their transition and energy mix. And then that then means that they need to ramp up their import of coal. The coal that we import, we, that we export ourselves, is the coal that we don't necessarily need. We, we, we're not taking coal that is supposed to be in a particular power station. This has been, it's coal that has been uh, exported since 1993, 1994, and it's got nothing to do with uh, the coal that is sitting in our power, power stations. ESCOM has got more than enough coal. They can bend the, the, the coal that, they, that we have in the country in terms of the contracts that they have and the mines for the next 100 years. So we can keep this coal here, and, and it will not help us in terms of solving load shedding or our security of supply. Um, we can ex keep exporting it. It will help our economy in terms of the jobs that it creates in the mines and elsewhere. Yeah, Prof, I think that we need such a bigger conversation here about being able to assist South Africa and being able to capacitate its own resources. As you're saying that we are living within the framework of a global community and, and definitely point taken. I just wonder, though, if we are utilizing, you know, the, the, the resources that we have um, and, and coal being a primary example of the resources that we have instead of us just following on the just transition, even though money is being given to us to allow for us to transition to renewables. Uh, we'll leave it there for now. Professor Samson Mampueli there from the Center of Renewable Energy 